Since the last SAT of 2025 was this weekend, I want to talk about all of the patterns that we noticed. And trust me, you're going to want to hear this because it is going to impact how you should be studying for the March SAT. This is because in the last month of a test cycle, the College Board likes to ask a lot of question types that they plan on using throughout the next one. They also collect a ton of data on what students are struggling on, which then they use to make questions for the next cycle. So starting with vocab, it's kind of been random throughout the fall cycle, but what you definitely need to know is that they repeat words so much. This means that if you want to get a really good score and you want to ace the vocab, all you need to do is study vocab words. You could probably learn somewhere around 500 vocab words by literally studying for 10 minutes a day for a month. Now for the grammar, notes, and transition questions, they have all become significantly harder over the last several months. A lot of one-off tests, such as the if they test, are not working as well anymore, which means that you need to understand every single thing in the grammar section. Also on the notes and transition questions, they're becoming more nuanced, which means that you're going to have to save some time during the test in order to get those ones done instead of rushing through them. You'll also have to make sure that on the notes questions, you are good at deciding if you actually need to read the notes or if the answer is just hiding in the question. Something interesting is that throughout all of the last three months, there's been at least one transition question that asks you about a whole transitional phrase instead of just one word. Now on the reading, it's been kind of sporadic, but what we have noticed is that the reading section is definitely getting harder. Over the last several months, most of the reading portions have been pretty challenging and there have been so many inference questions as well as so many science questions. Interestingly, a lot of people that took the November SAT thought that a lot of the reading passages felt like they were speaking regular English. When I say regular, I mean conversational, and basically that means that there's definitely a reason for the SAT to be kind of figuring out what type of passages they want to be giving. Now on the math, what we've noticed, especially in the December SAT, is they are asking longer questions. Also, the College Board is definitely asking a lot more challenging geometry questions as well as statistics questions. They're definitely trying to get away from you being able to utilize Desmos so much and more towards you actually needing to understand the information. However, we've seen that they reuse question types so, so much. Just like the last cycle, they're probably going to bring a ton of new questions into the new one, but they will also retain a lot of the old ones. So you need to make sure that you understand all of the topics that were tested this fall. Another thing to note is that they're definitely asking more edge case questions. To me, edge case questions are those questions that you probably learned for maybe half of a day in one of your classes throughout either Algebra 2 or Pre-Calc, and now you need to know them very well. A great example is the unit circle and completing the square. Also, with the questions that you can use Desmos, they're definitely more challenging to figure out when to use Desmos because you actually need to understand what you're doing. But as always, there definitely are a lot of Desmos questions that are super, super simple. Anyway, if you're taking the SAT in 2026, follow for more.